Hola, 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 mis amores, ¿cómo están? ¿Cómo están haciendo? So we have some hot, hot news. Fresh off the presses, y'all. And some more names have come up for us uh, when it comes to the Didi case. Lord and behold, guess whose name has recently come up? Clive Davis. Now, from what we're hearing, Clive Davis is actually the orchestrator behind all of this, essentially. So let's take a look. Also, before we dive in, please, por favor, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit the like button as well. Helps the channel out so, so much. Thank you. Really, really appreciate that you're here. Um, but go ahead and hit that like button, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Um, and also leave a comment below on your thoughts as well. I love to kind of hear what your thoughts are, what your opinions are on this. Right. So let's go ahead and take a look, uh, IPGG squad, and see what's going on here. Diddy got on his knees. Hollywood and is not music, a good place. Music and entertainment and to traffic. Traffic. Who how was, was mentored by Clive Davis? Now, rumor has it, allegedly, Diddy got on his knees for Clive Davis in 1994. I'm here to say that bisexuality does exist, and for me, I turned to it after my um, second marriage failed, and I dated women, and I dated a few men, and I ended up in a relationship with a man. Jaguar Wright just spilled some fresh tea on allegations about Diddy being an S trafficker, and she claims that Diddy learned how to do it from his mentor, Clive Davis. So y'all know by now that Diddy settled his lawsuit with Cassie after she sued him for DV, SA, and trafficking. However, this is not the end of legal trouble for Diddy, and two more alleged victims came forward accusing Diddy of SA. Word on the street is that there are many more women and men who were allegedly violated by Diddy. But it's not just Diddy. According to Jaguar Wright, the music industry is full of powerful men who use their position to traffic and SA young people. And one of them is allegedly Clive Davis, one of the most powerful figures in the recording industry who helped Diddy start Bad Boy Entertainment. So what really happened between Clive and Diddy? And is Diddy's relationship with Clive the reason his alleged crimes were never fully investigated? Let's get into it. I honestly think he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor. So it looks like Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy was just the beginning, and in just one week since Diddy settled with Cassie, more disturbing allegations surfaced about him and saying women. One alleged victim who identified... So, from a psychological standpoint, y'all, notice how she mentioned he loves power. The problem, one of the biggest problems here is that when you don't have internal power, when you have so much hate and you don't feel like you have any control over yourself and your, um, your mind, and internally, you don't feel like you have power over your emotions, which usually those emotions are negative. Then you go and you start seeking that power externally. And you start seeking to control others because you yourself lack internal peace and lack the ability to control yourself internally. So psychologically, do y'all see how that works? We're seeing it play out in Diddy perfectly. This is a very lost individual. So desperate for the external power due to the lack of internal power that he has and internal peace that he has that he got down on his knees for Clive Davis 
Y'all know what that means? He got down on his knees. That means he was he was playing the role as those sex workers that 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 he's being accused of of hiring. That that's him. He's one of those. So we will see also himself as Joy Dickerson Neal filed a civil that. suit against Diddy in New York Supreme Court and she's demanding a trial by jury. She a claims that back in 1991, she agreed to go on a dinner date with Diddy and during their date, he spiked her drink, resulting in her being in a physical state where she could not independently stand or walk. According to Neal, Diddy drove her to a place he was staying at and proceeded to essay her. And because she was under the influence of the substance Diddy allegedly slipped in her drink, Neil claims she lacked the physical ability or mental capacity to fend Combs off. She also alleges that Diddy recorded the essay and days later, a male friend told her that he saw the video and that Diddy showed it to everyone. According to the suit, Neil immediately filed police reports in New York and New Jersey and spoke to several prosecutors hoping to press charges. However, they told her her allegations would need to be corroborated. In the meantime, a third alleged victim filed a civil suit claiming that Diddy and singer Aaron Hall took turns essaying her back in the early 90s. The woman who chose to stay anonymous claimed she attended an after party at Aaron Hall's apartment when Diddy attacked her. The lawsuit states that after Combs finished doing his business, Jane Doe laid in bed, shocked and traumatized. As she was in the process of getting dressed, Hall barged into the room, pinned her down and forced Jane Doe to have with him. Meanwhile, unconfirmed reports also started circulating with more victims that will come forward in the near future, both male and female. According to some sources, Diddy allegedly essayed some of the male S workers that he paid to participate with Cassie in forced freak offs. Diddy's bodyguard Gene Deal also confirmed in a new interview that Diddy hired those male S workers for himself and he also said that over the years, Diddy had many encounters with men at Turkish baths. He didn't want it to come back to him in a way, you know, he hiring the people, he gonna put it all on her. Because she knew what he liked. Because she wasn't just hiring it for her. Don't get that effed up, Art. If you think that she was just hiring those male institutes for herself, nah. Wait outside a Turkish baths for them. You know what they do in the Turkish baths? That's where a lot of gay men meet. And they all take hot baths together twice sometimes three times a week me and the driver be outside he'll run into the turkish bath now diddy sexuality aside that's not the part we need to focus on it's the okay but why is that not a part that we need to focus on if it wasn't important then why has he been hiding it this whole time? Why has he been hiding his sexuality this whole time? Even, even, even though it's legal now, everything, and no one actually really cares. The biggest issue that I have about this is that he used a woman to cover it up by harming her, beating her psychologically, assusing her. So then he put it on her. He wanted to have uh, these workers, this, this, this S workers. And he had her take the fall for that. They're always putting it on women. Their vile nature, the male's vile nature, they will go out of their way to put it on the woman. And then the public comes in and starts destroying the woman. Even though it's the males that have the vile and evil spirit and nature. That is my biggest issue with this. And that's why I think it needs to be addressed. But of course we won't. Of course they won't address it. Because women just need to shut up and keep suffering and keep taking the fall for the evil that males bring.
fact that Diddy has been allegedly essaying and trafficking women and men for years. And according to Jaguar Wright, the only reason he's gotten away with it is because of his connections to other alleged traffickers in the industry, like Clive Davis. In her interview with Storm Monroe, Jaguar claimed that Diddy might have been groomed and essayed by his late mentor, Uptown. On records founder Andre Harrell, who in turn was groomed by his mentor, Clive Davis. Jaguar said that Diddy uses his position in the industry to traffic both women and men, and he allegedly learned it all from Andre and Clive. My focus right now is Sean Combs. Okay. Tell us why. Tell us why. Because he's a trafficker. Okay. And he's using music and entertainment to traffic. Now, is this, is this just boys, girls, adults, kids? Like it I mean, from what I've heard from sources that I would consider reliable, it really doesn't matter. Wow. Um, I don't think sexuality is something that has anything to do with gender at this point for Sean. I, I, I honestly think he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor, who loved to control people. And his mentor was Andre Lavelle. Tell tell us how who was, was he mentored victimized? by Clyde Davis. Jaguar pointed out that Andre Harrell fired Diddy from Uptown Records in 1993, and within just two weeks, Diddy launched his own label, Bad Boy, quickly surpassing Uptown. Back in 2019, Diddy shared his tribute to Clive, saying, Clive Davis and Arista Records gave me a chance when I was starting Bad Boy Entertainment. He was one of the first industry executives to really believe in me. I'm forever grateful for him. Now, according to Jaguar, the only... You see? He is and was a loser. No one wanted him, so he had to get on his knees, literally, had to get on his knees for Clive Davis. He just said it himself. No one wanted him. Loser. When is it going to be? Enough. When are when are we going to address the issue of if someone is gay or bisexual? It needs to be communicated. When are we going to address that this is an issue that we need to figure out? Because too many people are still operating in the shadows, in the closets, which is okay, except for when they proceed to drag other people into it. Other innocent bystanders that have no clue. So those bystanders don't get a chance to choose. That doesn't seem very fair to me. When are we going to come up with a solution for that? Because that still happens every day. So we're trading off one victim for another. And most of the time, it's the woman. That's really my biggest issue with it. It's the woman taking the fall in every way. Only reason Diddy was able to build a bad boy empire so quickly Everyone, is because he did some Especially ladies in particular. Andre got passed over. Stay away from Hollywood. Like, wow. how do you go from being the president of Uptown and losing your entire company to your intern? Like, Puff started out as an intern. Jaguar also suggested that Clive helped Diddy cover up his 1991 City College incident when nine young people were killed during a stampede at a charity basketball game that Diddy organized. The victims included children and one pregnant woman, the girlfriend of rapper Father MC, who was signed to Uptown Records. And he got smart and he listened to all of his advisors, mostly Clive Davis, and he won. Like, he was determined to win. 
Like nobody knew how determined he was to win. Like that whole thing with Father MC, he covered that thing real fast. And he didn't have proper security, he didn't have proper permits, and there was a stampede and Father MC's woman got uh, trampled to death. And now, how, do, um, how does one go about covering up something like that? Well, I mean, a, a, apparently you pay people, from what I've been told. Diddy denied responsibility for this tragedy. However, according to multiple sources, the event was overbooked and Diddy refused to listen to his security when they warned him someone could die. Now, as for Clive Davis and Diddy, according to one blind item, the reason Clive helped Diddy start Bad Boy is because Diddy allegedly took Andre Harrell's place as Clive's boy toy. So Clive Davis is over Arista, which is over Diddy's Bad Boy record. Now, rumor has it, allegedly, Diddy got on his knees for Clive Davis in 1994, and that's how Bad Boy Records came about. Diddy and Clive share a lot in common. Not only have they faced allegations about essaying and trafficking young men and women, but also a lot of people who worked with them ended up dying under mysterious circumstances. In Clive's case, there's a long-standing conspiracy that he had something to do with Whitney Houston's death. On February 11th, 2012, Whitney was found dead in her bathtub at the Beverly Hilton Hotel where Clive was preparing his pre-Grammys party. When Clive was notified that Whitney died, he decided to go through with the party, a decision that raised a lot of eyebrows because people couldn't understand how Clive and all these other celebs could party while Whitney's dead body was upstairs. And yes, Diddy also partied the night Whitney died. In fact, according to this article from Entertainment Weekly, Diddy was hospitalized for a severe migraine that he developed after returning home from the post-Grammy party he hosted at the Playboy Mansion. Now, going back to rumors about Clive and Diddy's relationship, we know that Clive came out as bisexual in 2013. He was previously married twice and has four children. As for Diddy, he has six biological children with four different women, and he also adopted his late girlfriend Kim Porter's son, Quincy. And while Diddy never addressed rumors about his sexuality, the allegations have been following him for decades. But again, this is not about Clive and Diddy being bisexual. What people want to know is if Jaguar is telling the truth about them trafficking young men and women. Because no, it's not. I just don't understand why it's so hard for them to just be, or at least Dee Dee. Clive Davis apparently came out and just said it. But for Diddy to just be honest, instead of throwing women under the bus, using them as a beard, using them as a shield, to catch the punches for him. In 2023, when no one even cares, if you're gay or whatever you want to do, that's your problem. Because if she is, then it could mean they've been using their money and influence to avoid criminal charges. One fan said, he was groomed by Clive and now he's grooming others. I would advise any young person to stay clear of the music industry. And another person added, escaping Diddy coming soon to Netflix. Pity that Clive will most likely get away with his evil, with it being revealed most likely after his death. But how do you feel about all this? Do you think Clive Davis is protecting Diddy because he might be guilty of the same things? They've been using their money and influence to avoid criminal charges. One fan said, he was groomed by Clive and now he's grooming others. I would advise any young person to steer clear of the music industry. And another- oh. All young people, all young women, you will have it worse because of the patriarchy. Stay far, far away from the entertainment industry. Stay far away from that place. It is not worth your soul. You do not need millions and millions of dollars. You don't, you don't even need a million dollars to live comfortably. Anyways, y'all, so this is the latest news that, the, that just dropped. Apparently, Clive Davis is allegedly behind the whole thing. And no, he's definitely not going to get caught for any. I mean, this guy is dirt old. He's, he's done the deed and he's good to go. So unfortunately, I don't think anything will happen to him in particular. We won't find out anything until after his death, his long gone and dead 
And even then we might not, he might just take it to the grave with him. But we've been hearing rumors, so we, we know. Hollywood is like, it's like it's made up of gangs that are all operating underneath the cloak of entertainment. Anyways, y'all, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, it's crazy. It's so, so crazy. Um, go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe. And I will catch y'all in the next one. Okay, bye.